I first came across lino printing when I was at school, about 16 or 17, and I spent a lot of time up in the school art room, although I wasn't actually officially studying art. But there was a young lady there who was having trouble working the printing press, uh, so I offered her my assistance. And we took her lino cut, which was of a, a mother and child, and we printed it using this little old-fashioned uh, bookbinding press. And yeah, that came out quite well. And then I said, well, well let's clean the ink off the, of the block and wiped it with water, dried it a bit, and then put it back into the printing press and spun the handle of the, uh, of the book binding press down so that the lino pressed into some blotting paper. Oh, that's not quite got it dry, so let's do that again. And that action of a double twist and a double printing produced something that looked more like a Leonardo cartoon than the original lino print that uh, uh, Kathleen had made. So I thought, that's magic. I, and I, I think I must have immediately bonded with that particular technique. So I went out and bought myself some lino cutting tools and a bit of lino and started um, uh, producing my own lino cuts. In fact, I, I have a, an art exhibition on at the moment in July through to August at the Peterborough Art Gallery. And the first thing that you would see as you came into the art gallery would be one of those prints that I made 60 years ago. My parents thought probably quite rightly that there's no way to make a living out of art unless you happen to be oh, David Hockney, uh, which I wasn't. And so I thought a friend of mine had gone to this teacher training college. I thought that looks like a, a good place to go. I was working for two years after school as a librarian. But in my spare time, I was doing art all the time. In fact, I was doing art in the library as well, whenever they would let me do stuff. Uh, and so I applied to a teacher training college. I had a, an A-level in English literature, so I applied to potentially train to be an English teacher. But I sneaked my collect, little collection of artwork wrapped up in the Sunday Times and took it along to the interview. And uh, I asked if I could have an interview in the art department. And strangely enough, they said yes. And without me having an O level, an A level, I hadn't done art officially at school uh, since I was 13. And this is seven years later. And they accepted me on the course. And having been out of school for two years, I just dived into the, uh, the art course like it was the best thing ever. And it turned out that it was a, a, a superb art department with some great teachers and uh, I'm forever grateful. It was entered by my primary school teacher for the National Children's Art Exhibition, which were, uh, in those days was run by the Sunday Pictorial. And uh, um, for, for reasons unknown to me in my uh, seven-year-old life, uh, I got the, the, the collage back and my parents were very proud of that. So they put it in the only picture frame which uh, was in my family. And actually the picture frame uh, belonged to my granddad's uh, membership certificate of the water buffaloes. So when I finally took my cloth collage out of the picture frame, I discovered Grandad's water buffaloes membership card behind that from 1941. And uh, I managed to purchase a copy of Children Art, Art Show. And this is the, the catalogue. And I looked inside, craft work for uh, seven-year-olds, whatever, and uh, no, I'm afraid that it's not in there. Um, 
it seems that uh, nurse giving me oxygen, funny man at the circus, running after a horse, the cat and the goldfish all got the nod. But I'm afraid Vikings at war didn't make it. I think in terms of satisfaction, it was the production of uh, what I called the Rotherhide Suite, which had a, a very long gestation period. My sister-in-law lived on a barge in the River Thames in the mid-1970s. She was there because her partner was the manager of a warehouse which was filled with artists and craftspeople. When the Rotherhide warehouses stopped doing what they were built for, they were left empty and the local councils were afraid that they would become vandalised and burnt down. So with the help of the famous British artist Bridget Riley, they developed a project called Art Space, which gave artists and craftspeople the opportunity to have vast studio space for very minimum cost, peppercorn rents. And I went down and photographed. I took half a, half a reel of film, 18 shots, back in 1976. I knew I wanted to make prints from them, but I had no idea at that time how I was going to do that. That was almost at, almost at the beginning of my printing career. I think about 2014, someone explained to me that I could process my films through a computer and rid them of the parallax problem that you get when you stand on the ground and you photograph looking up at a building, it seems to taper off into the distance. Well, there's a cunning little trick that you can do in Photoshop that corrects that. And so I, I played around with the image and discovered I could do just that. I could get those buildings back square and standing tall. And that started a, a long process of deciding which images I wanted to use, how I wanted to create those uh, images and turn them into a suite of prints. And I think there's about seven of them uh, in the sequence. I thought, well, who might be interested in that? And that's the Museum of London. So I wrote to them, explained what I'd been doing, sent them photographs of the whole thing, and they allowed me to donate a set of prints and the proofs for some of those prints to, to the museum. Now, I have no idea when, if, or ever they're going to be shown, but to have my work in the Museum of London, well, that to me is my lifetime achievement, if you like.